Good morning. As we prepare to celebrate the ascension of the Lord, our parish family extends a prayerful welcome to visitors from throughout our diocese to their cathedral church, and to all who are gathered with us as our sisters and brothers in the Lord. Please join in singing the processional hymn, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise, which can be found in your bulletin. Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers and for us to recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ, your Son, is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself al alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? 
this Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come, and he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, hear me. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Morning to all of you again. Good to be with you, especially those who are joining us live stream. Hopefully, not so much longer huh, of that. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, and so, in order to explain it, I'm going to use as my guide uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. He has written years back a series of books called Jesus of Nazareth. Very accessible if you haven't read them. They're well worth it. But he says, the ascension of Christ means that Jesus no longer belongs to the world of corruption and death. It means it belongs completely to God. He, the eternal son, has taken our human being to the presence of God. He has taken with him flesh and blood in a transfigured form, a resurrected form. We find a place in God through Jesus Christ. The human being has been taken into the very life of God. And given that God embraces and sustains the whole cosmos, the Lord's ascension means that Christ has not gone far away from us. But that now, thanks to the fact that he is with the Father, he is close to each one of us forever. Each one of us can address him. Each one of us may turn to him. Because he always hears our voice. We may distance ourselves inwardly from him. We can live with our backs, turn to him. But he always awaits us and is always close to us. Jesus told his disciples everything since he is the living word of God. And God can give no more of himself than himself. And he has given himself completely, totally to us in Jesus Christ. That is, he gave us everything. There is no other revelation of God than Jesus Christ. There's not another one. In Jesus, we are told everything. We were given everything. But our understanding is limited because that's the mission of the Holy Spirit. It should introduce us more and more into the grandeur of the mystery of Christ. It is through the Spirit that we experience the closeness of Jesus. So what is the meaning of Christ's ascension into heaven? It expresses our belief that in Christ, human nature, the humanity in which we all share, has entered into the inner life of God in a new and before the ascension 
in an unheard of way. It means we have found an everlasting place in God. Heaven is not a place beyond the stars, but something much greater something that requires far more audacity to assert. Heaven means that we now have a place in God himself. How can we say that I have a place in God? Because of Jesus Christ, the man who is in God and eternally one with God is at the same time God's constant abiding openness to all humans. This, as Pope Benedict says, is it. Jesus himself is what we call heaven. Heaven isn't a place as it is a person. The person of him in whom God and man are forever inseparably one. And we go to heaven and enter into heaven to the extent that we go to Jesus Christ and enter into him. That means that ascension into heaven can be something that takes place in our everyday lives. Every time we go to Jesus, we go to heaven. Remember, for the disciples, the ascension was not what we usually misinterpret it as being the temporary absence of Christ from the world. It meant, rather, his new, definitive, and irrevocable presence by participation in God's royal power. God has a place for us. In God himself, there is a place for us. So each time we go to Jesus we ascend to heaven. For Jesus Christ is heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us offer our petitions to God through our Lord Jesus, who was taken up into heaven and intercedes for us at the right hand of God the Father. For the Church, for Francis our Pope and Austin Anthony our Bishop, 
that they may reveal God's love in their humble and dedicated service to God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have wandered far from the practice of their faith, that they may return soon and be welcomed back into the Father's house, the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the swift success of the science research community to develop and distribute a vaccine to end the scourge of the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our St. Andrew High School graduates, may they know their true vocation and be given the grace to follow it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who will receive the sacraments of initiation at the Vigil Mass of Pentecost next Saturday, may they go forth to evangelize by their holy lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Robert and Lucille Weber, military personnel, and all victims of the pandemic. And we pause to recall the prayers that we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we firmly believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended this day into heaven. May our minds dwell always on our heavenly homeland, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing, O Most Holy One, which can be found in your bulletin. O Most Holy One. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There are a couple of announcements. Tomorrow, Monday, there will be Mass at 12 noon, and it will be live-streamed. There will only be one Mass tomorrow. All are invited to join us for Mass in the Cathedral and pray in a special way for all of our friends and family members, especially those who have died. A reminder that next Saturday at the 5 o'clock Mass, we will celebrate the Sacraments of Initiation, usually celebrated at the Easter Vigil. So please join with us as we welcome our sisters and brothers into the Catholic Church. Have a good memorial. Am I still on? Have a good Memorial Day weekend, huh? Uh, what a wonderful day tomorrow. Um, all summer, really, but just stop by a cemetery if you haven't been to a cemetery for a while to remember our beloved dead, especially those who've sacrificed their lives uh, for our freedoms, uh, which we can so easily take for granted. Our wonderful Catholic tradition is when we visit a cemetery to pray in Our Father, a Hail Mary, and a Glory Be for the repose of the souls of those who've died. They're still with us. Death doesn't separate us from them. And they count on us for our prayers uh, so they can welcome us too huh, into the kingdom. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord.